So I was a second year medical student who has just hobbled through a rather dry and a boring first year and was visiting my wards for the first time. I simply thought to myself, now is the time to, for the patient exposure and to hone my clinical skills. Very soon, I went to attend my posting in the operation theater. For all the non-medicals here, let me tell you, this is the place where the users click their first selfie. On a serious note, this is a dream come true for every medical student. And likewise, I was also thrilled to see the ambience. The patient was lying on the operation table. All the monitors and machines were buzzing around. Three, four persons dressed in green scrubs, caps and masks were surrounding the patient. And everything came to life under the strong ceiling light, the theater light. When I went closer, I saw a mesmerizing scene. The patient's abdomen was open and there were some reddish, brownish, whitish structure seen. The heroes in green, we're discussing something and exploring the patient's right side. We were told by the assistant surgeon that it is a case of removal of gallbladder. Later came to know it as open cholecystectomy. At that moment, I realized I was looking at the liver in life with its beautiful edges as we used to see in the anatomy classes. I stood completely mesmerized at the marvel of the surgical procedure, beautifully executed by those deft hands and instantly fell in love with surgery. There was no turning back. Let me take you to a few thousand years ago. Before Christ, the surgical work was being done by those who actually mended shoes, did the stitching and the sewing work. In other words, it was the work of the cobblers and the surgeons never got their due respect. It was only hundred of years later with the advent of sterilization and science of anesthesia that the surgeons were hailed as lifesavers and heroes. Let me show you some pictures. You have come across the names of Shushrut. Know him as the father of surgery and father of plastic surgery. William Stuart Halstead, the man who pioneered breast surgery. And Eric Muhe, the person, the surgeon who performed the first laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Did you find something missing in the narrative? There is more to the story. Can anyone identify this picture? So she is Anandi Bai Gopal Rao Joshi the first female physicians of India. Then we have Kadamni Ganguly, again one of the first female physicians of India. And Mary Punin Lucas, the first female Surgeon General of India. To be very honest, this narrative has still not changed. According to the statistics from the American Medical Association, only 19% of the surgeons in America are women surgeons. Clearly shows that surgery is a male dominated profession all around the world. According to Indian Association of Women Surgeons, only 700 out of 25,000 Indian surgeons are females. In March 2016, Times of India reported that the women surgeons in India are becoming a vanishing tribe and that too largely restricted to gynecology, few to ophthalmology and surgery, and even fewer to the surgical superspeciality disciplines like cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, oncosurgery, plastic surgery, urosurgery, and so on. Many of you are aware that every female surgeon stepping into her first year of post-graduation is being told the same. You have to put in three times the work as your male counterpart to stand a chance to be called equal or to get equal opportunities. Well, I have never bought this idea and I'm proud to share that it neither hampered my career in any way. And why going that far up to the post-graduation? The disagreement starts at home much earlier before you choose to become a general surgeon. My own family, always been supportive in my decisions, was dead against my idea of becoming a general surgeon. And I had to fight tooth and nail to convince them that there are indeed specialities outside gynecology and pediatrics that are made for women. My personal opinion, surgery is a bit relaxed speciality as compared to gynecology and pediatrics. So where is this divide rooted? In the notion that surgery is hard, made only for tough humans, and females thought of as soft won't be able to cope up with, or something like females have to keep their time free to fulfill the commitments of the family as their first priorities, or is it just all prejudices? On a personal note, I dug up the truth later. The reason behind my family's resistance was they were looking for an alliance for me. 
and the prospective groom, in spite of a medico himself, agreeing on all the terms and conditions, was very insecure of a wife who would become a gender surgeon. But despite of all the jeers that extended till the time I entered inside the counseling hall, this th alliance was thankfully called off. Again, a new alliance was looked for me in my first year of post-graduation. And the e only question which I ever asked my husband was, are you okay with a wife who is a gender surgeon? I need not to. No woman must be pushed to the point where her only concern before making a choice of a husband is whether he is okay with her career choices or not. This acceptance has to be built way before, both at the professional and the societal scale. It's a common thing to have your batchmates giving remarks like, Oh, you got to operate the case? You are a girl. Why are you studying so hard? They will hand the marks right to you. Or something like, Oh, I only get all the scoldings because the seniors can't scold you. Lucky was I to get the maximum trust of my seniors and faculty, be it handling complicated surgeries or good clinical case presentations. So let's ponder, does gender have to do anything with the surgical career choices? The truth is that it has never been a gender bias issue. It is not one and will never be one. It is only about honing the right skills. And in context of surgery, it ultimately equates to hard work and perseverance. And to put in the required amount of hours to achieve these skills, you must pursue something you love, something you are ready to commit with your best. I was married in my first year of post-graduation and was carrying my baby. As I was very skeptical of getting any comments because of being a female, I decided to hide my pregnancy. And over the next eight and a half months, I pulled off every emergency duty, did all the cases, completed all the surgeries I was posted at. And just to juggle between being what my heart wanted and my body wanted, I took rest in the break rooms and was again to be the first one to report for the rounds. Let me ask you one question. Did I had missed out on anything if I had made my necessity known? No. Did I want to prove a point? Again, no. It was the sheer love of what I was pursuing. And I did not want to lose out on any opportunity of being close to what had mesmerized me. I also did not want anyone to take a sympathizing tone with me and say, oh, you are not able to do it. Let me handle it for you. I had certain expectations out of myself and I wanted to live up to that and it is indeed possible. So my little boy lived with me in the hostel while I pursued my MS General Surgery training. It is very much indeed possible to juggle between being a mother and a doctor and it is indeed possible to take adequate time for your family while still pursuing your own dreams. But in the current scenario with so few existing women surgeons, the medical generation have very few mentors, women mentors, and role models. So in accumulation of all my experiences combined together, I would not be wrong if I say that we must seek a paradigm shift. It is required at all the fronts, batchmates, colleagues, and mentors. I have been extremely lucky to get very supportive seniors and faculty who would scold me when I was doing something wrong. Also compliment me when I was doing something commendable. So, an ideal batchmate must learn to provide equal opportunities, to learn and correct each other as they go, instead of pinning the blame on others and thinking that a certain person, irrespective of the gender, is less meritorious or less deserving. And as a part of the sea changes that would be required at all the fronts, the most important cornerstone around which all these changes would hinge is your own perception, very own self-perception. And I want every budding doctor in this auditorium today to remember that one can rarely go wrong as long as he or she pursues what he or she is passionate about. So before making a choice of your speciality or super speciality, do remember not to choose something you are not passionate about and follow what your heart and mind says. By the completion of my internship, my entire college was aware of my interest in surgery. And when I qualified the PG entrance, I was strongly advised to join a particular college, the best one for surgery in India. Somewhere deep inside me, I was not convinced, but then got swayed away with the aura and joined the college. But see, the disaster followed soon, and I realized it was a terrible mistake. And at a time when to get a PG seat, 
All the medicals know. One has to sacrifice his sleep, blood and sweat. I decided to relinquish my seat and came back. Later, I joined my MS General Surgery course from a college of my choice and have never looked back ever since. So do remember, what is best for everyone may not be the best for you. This was one time in my life where I went against my inner feelings and instantly regretted it. Quoting from Robin Sharma's 5 AM Club, what makes the best the best is not their genetics but their habits, attributes like dedication, discipline, even thoughtfulness of an organized mind, all comes from continuous training and hard practice. And no one should be deprived of this chance on any basis, on any beliefs. Thank you.